the worst ozone pollution in the country. Cancer, bronchitis, headache, nosebleed. You open your garage, right there is an oil drilling site. Our lives are not up to these politicians. It's up to us to make sure that we have our justice. minutes from home. Oh, it's in the Trump golf course near here? It's it right is. there. It's like literally right there. Oh, no, we're not going there. <laughs> no, we aren't. Yeah, we should start counting Teslas. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> Sweet. So it smells, it smells sweet. like happiness. <laughs> <laughs> you look down there, it looks so ugly. Hey, that's home. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like ugly, like as in the yeah, refinery. You can see though. the smog coming out. Yeah, from you it. can see the smog. It's all like gray. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's just gray. We just didn't realize what it was until yeah. we actually were taught that, oh, that's pollution that yeah. you're breathing in every day. Wilmington is home to the third largest oil field in the US. Almost every street has a view of the industry. Los Angeles and the nearby city of Long Beach have the worst ozone pollution in the country. That's according to a report last year from the American Lung Association. The air here in Wilmington is particularly bad, with the pollution burden sitting at 100, according to the California Environmental Protection Agency. You imagine a scale where zero is fantastic air quality, 100 is terrible. Here in this neighborhood, it's as bad as it gets. My name is Isabel Alvaringa and I'm 18 years old. This house is really special to me because even though it's really small, for us it's like really homey and I had my family with me. But when we moved in here, I did not know there was a refinery close to us. I did not know that this refinery was actually polluting my lungs, my my family, my health. It was affecting my health. It was making a big impact. Con ganas. In 2013, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, stage three breast cancer. <laughs> 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 I did not know what cancer was. As a 13-year-old, I went on Google, and I found out that, like, you can possibly die. And every single day, this is a constant fear, a stress. I'm just afraid that I won't make it to, like, my 30s. 
if I don't do anything about this. My name is Ashley Hernandez. I am a organizer with Communities for a Better Environment. We are a statewide nonprofit fighting to build environmental health and justice. TBE is all about community. Like the people that I see, they're just like me. They're people that have families, they're people that have dreams, they're people that came to Wilmington wanting to have the best, never knowing that a threat could linger in the background. We have to recognize that our access to clean air and access to clean water, it was taken from us. There was a past where we had a clean neighborhood and healthy neighbors. And you're not just seeing a Wilmington resident, you're seeing somebody that's dealing with the impacts of one of the most contaminated and toxic communities in the state of California. I'm Daryl Molina Sarmiento, and I'm the executive director of Communities for a Better Environment. We are the 40-year-old environmental justice organization, and we want to make sure that our community members' voices are not silenced. For example, when Chevron exploded in 2012, it sent thousands of people to the hospital in Richmond and in the surrounding communities. My father-in-law told me, we can't do anything about it. That's a real reaction for so many people. We want folks to know that the power that they have is real and can push back against the oil industry and its impacts in our communities. My name is Gladys Limon. I was senior attorney at Communities for a Better Environment. Environmental justice is about ensuring that all people have basic human rights. And the frontline community is literally at the front line to polluting industries. One of those communities that Communities for a Better Environment organizes in and serves is Wilmington. It is a part of the city of Los Angeles in District 15. The community of Wilmington is impacted by five major oil refineries. Three of them are within Wilmington borders. These oil refineries make up the largest oil refinery infrastructure on the West Coast. There are 479 active oil wells and 154 idle oil wells within Council District 15, and that accounts for over half of the oil wells in all of the city of Los Angeles. Wilmington is impacted from the well to the wheel, we have oil drilling happening in Wilmington. We have oil refining also happening in Wilmington. We have the transportation of those oils through trains, through trucks, and through the ships. So it's a sacrifice zone. These community members' lives are being sacrificed for this industry and for this economic infrastructure. So everybody has a seat. Except for Art, get in. If y'all are hungry, like you guys should eat. Folks from Southeast, there's some um, cheese pizza, latos. <laughs> Today's meeting is gonna be a pretty cool chance to get to know why is it that we're here, right? Like all of us in this room care about one thing, which is environmental justice. Like we believe that our communities deserve the right for clean air, clean water, clean soil. One of the main pieces that we need to look at is this um, fact sheet that our research created for us. The short-term exposure to the soup of chemicals from oil refineries and oil fires and black smoke can potentially cause nausea, breathing problems, asthma. Chronic exposure can cause cancer, nervous system, heart reproductive and other hazards. So one of the things that y'all can encourage folks to do is just know a little bit more about what's happening. 
How many of you all have somebody in your family with asthma? How many of you all have dealt with um, cancer in your family? Bronchitis, headaches, nosebleeds, scratchy throats, <laughs> nausea. We are the physical representation of that data. What's a sensitive area or sensitive receptor that has oil drilling in your community? Uh, the church. The church. It's where they gather and they pray, and there's the oil drilling in their parking lot. So right where you pray, you have an oil drilling site. Hospitals. Hospitals, yeah. The irony of having oil drilling sites next to a hospital. For real. <laughs> it's not that great, right? <laughs> The emissions coming from oil drilling sites are not creating healthy people. And our council member has yet to do a single thing about it. These are symptoms to the environmental injustices we have to deal with every day. But it doesn't have to be like that. We're gonna demand LA City Council create a 2,500 foot buffer zone between community sources and oil drilling wells. Our lives are not up to these agencies and to these politicians. It's up to us to make sure that we have our justice in our communities. In 2018, a couple of CBE youth members did a study with USC, which is a private university, focusing on particular matter in our communities. Particular matter is substances that are in the air, but we can't see them because they're really, really small. The scientists told us that the average could go up to 30, but when I saw the numbers, my highest one went up to 120. 75, 76, 76, 77, In Wilmington, these oil drilling sites are in backyards. It's really scary. We're like five minutes away from my house, and they operate for 24 hours, every day. There are dozens of deadly, highly dangerous chemicals that are used in residential neighborhoods on a daily basis at these oil operations. Crystalline silica, methanol, hydrofluoric acid, formaldehyde, butoxyethanol, xylene, aluminum oxide, and there are a host of others that we don't know about that are hidden from the public's view under trade secret laws. And because we cannot prove that this particular cancer was caused by this particular chemical from this specific refinery, we don't have accountability. And residents are the ones who are paying for this. You open your garage, right there is an oil drilling site. You're washing your dishes, right there is an oil drilling site. You're at church, in the parking lot, there's an oil drilling site. And so we came together with other organizations to advance a 2,500-foot buffer zone in the city of LA. It would stop any new and existing oil drilling within 2,500 feet of sensitive receptors, meaning schools, homes, where people live, play, and worship. We're gonna have a call to action at City Hall for a 2,500 foot buffer from oil drilling sites to spaces like your homes. So if y'all are down, we're gonna be having a lot of people come out. We're gonna be making a lot of noise because we really wanna make sure that the city passes this ordinance. It's really up to our communities and our concerned residents to get this policy passed. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You have a good nice one. Day. Environmental justice is possible. And so that's why it's very important that frontline communities make sure that we're at the decision making table and we're challenging anything that's gonna affect this. Can we take a minute of your day really quickly? Okay. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so we got one down. But whenever I do canvassing 
The biggest obstacle is making sure people are engaging into the community because without the folks from Wilmington, we can't do anything. I wanted to leave you this just because you have oil drilling near your neighborhood. There's a church over there that has oil drilling. Yeah, they do, yeah. You know, yeah. You know there's a daycare around here. It takes a lot of time to build trust with our community. You just have to learn to be in spaces that are challenging, be in spaces that are different, because we know if we're not there, nobody's ever going to see us, and we have to be heard. Y'all don't want to listen to us, but you guys have to at least take notice that residents in this neighborhood want these Thank changes. You. We need action that's deliberate and that's going to transform our lives. What is it that you're looking exactly? Like, yeah. What is it that you want from us? You can, you can help us sign a petition. I'd rather not. Okay, no worries. Sorry. No worries. <laughs>
take our futures lightly. They are the ones that are experiencing it every single day. And their fight is for their community to thrive. I believe it is a basic human right to breathe clean air and have access to safe drinking water. I fight so no other Angelino has to experience the nosebleeds that I've had to go through because of toxic emissions. It's very important that we remain strong and recognizing that the most powerful resource and most important resource in Wilmington is not oil. It's us. Stand LA has been an inspiration for all of our statewide partners, making sure that we have a 2,500 foot setback and also phase out all existing wells. When people say, why don't I leave? We just go to another state. I just answer, why am I gonna leave the bad stuff here and just move? I need to change this. I don't want to leave the problem. I want to fix it. I don't want the problem to affect other generations. I want to fix it. I want it to end. Thank you.